Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Gonna be giving you my match reaction for the Manchester United Villarreal game. So yesterday night Manchester United came from behind to beat Villarreal 2 1 at Old Trafford in the Champions League group stage. It was our second game of the group. Cristiano Ronaldo saved Manchester United. He scored the winner in the 95th minute of stoppage time. Ronaldo hit it from a tight angle. Villarreal's goalkeeper, Rulli, got an hand to it, but he couldn't keep it out. Jesse Lingard got the assist. That's five goals for Ronaldo in five games. His first goal in the Champions League since his return to Man United. It was Ronaldo's 178th appearance in the Champions League. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is obviously delighted with the winning goal by Cristiano Ronaldo but he did make an admission saying Man United got lucky. Ronaldo wants to retire at Man United and then coach Cristiano Junior in the Red Devils youth team. Prior to the Aston Villa game in the league, Solskjaer said he believes Ronaldo can keep playing for Man United into his 40s. He's 36 at the moment. Ronaldo has already hinted that he's looking to stay at Man United beyond his current contract. Ronaldo signed a two-year contract with Man United with an option of a third year. Ronaldo receives £480,000 a week. So he's the highest earner at Man United. Ronaldo wears the number seven shirt. And we got him for 19.8 million with add-ons included. Don't forget Ronaldo is already the record scorer in the Champions League. And earlier on this season, Ronaldo became the all-time international top scorer with two late goals against Ireland. Ronaldo did really well in his first spell at Manchester United. He scored 118 goals in 292 games in all competitions. And he won three Premier League titles, the Champions League, the FA Cup, a couple of League Cups and the FIFA Club World Cup. And in his first spell at Man United, he endured six years. So there you go, and Ronaldo also had a headed chance in the game yesterday night, but it went over the crossbar. Our other goal came from Alex Tellez. Um, it was a very good volley by Tellez. Uh, the Tellez goal came from a Bruno Fernandes free kick. Bruno Fernandes executed the free kick well. So Fernandes got the assist for Telez's goal. Yeah, Telez had a good game. I thought he put some 
good crosses into the box from corners. Telez obviously came in for Luke Shaw. Because obviously Luke Shaw has been injured. Telez also put a good performance out in the defeat to West Ham in the Carabao Cup. There's a chance that Telez will leave Manchester United next year. The reason we brought Telez in was to provide competition for Luke Shaw, but obviously since we brought Telez in, we've seemed to get the best out of Luke Shaw. You know, we got Telez in a deal worth 15.4 million from Porto. Don't forget he was out with injury earlier on in the season. Villarreal's goal came from Paco Alcacer. Um, he scored from close range. Dan Juma got the assist. So there were the goals in the game. I've got to be honest with you, it wasn't a good performance by Manchester United. Villarreal should have been out of sight in that first half. You know, Villarreal, you know, kept the possession well, they passed the ball well, and they created some very good chances in the game. You know, Dan Juma, um, he had a couple of chances. You know, De Gea kept him out. Dan Juma was causing Man United all sorts of problems. Alcacer also had a chance. Jeremy Pino, he also had a good chance in the game. De Gea was superb in goal. He must have made a good four or five saves in that game. De Gea has done well so far this season. Obviously, De Gea reclaimed his number one spot back. This season is De Gea's 11th season at Man United, so he's been a long servant. Obviously, he's been with us since the Ferguson era. Obviously, De Gea has made mistakes in the last couple of years. But a couple of years ago, De Gea was regarded as the best goalkeeper in the world because he's won everything domestically at the football club and he's made over 500 appearances for Man United in all competitions. Obviously, we know De Gea is staying at Man United for this season because in the summer... De Gea decided to cut short his holiday by two weeks to fight for the starting place. And De Gea said he's determined to fight for his Man United future. He's got like two years left on his contract and he receives £375,000 a week. Uh, Diego... Dalot, obviously, he played at right back, obviously came in for Anwan Basaka. Obviously, Anwan Basaka wasn't available for the game because obviously he was suspended. You know, Basaka got sent off in the 2 1 defeat to Young Boys for stamping on Martins. But Dalot, I thought he was very poor yesterday against Villarreal. Um, his positioning was poor, his deliveries into the box were poor. And Dan Juma was causing Diego De Lott all sorts of problems. De Lott, though, played well against West Ham in the Cup the other week. 
Uh, obviously, Delot is our backup right back to Anwan Basaka. Last season, Delot endured a loan spell with AC Milan. Reflecting on that, he gained some experience. We got the lot three years ago from Porto. We paid 19 million for him, and he's got a contract with Man United till 2023. There's a good chance that we're going to offload the lot in January. We should have offloaded him in the summer transfer window this year. But obviously it's said towards the end of the summer transfer window that it's very likely the lot's going to be staying at Man United. Uh, Varane, I thought he was quite poor yesterday. Um, he made a horrible mistake in the game. That obviously Villarreal failed to punish. But I think Varane did make a vital interception in the game. It's Varane's first poor game as a Manchester United player. Because like I've said, I think Varane's done really well since he's come in. We got Varane in a deal worth £41 million. With add-ons included, Man United paid like thirty-four million up front, and Varane signed a four-year contract with Man United with an option of a fifth year. Uh, Varane to Man United was official just before kick-off against Leeds on the opening day. Ferran is regarded as one of the best centre-halves in the world. He's highly experienced and he's got a good pedigree as a player. Because look what he won when he was at Real Madrid. He won a lot of trophies and Ferran was a long-serving player at Real Madrid. He endured 10 years with them. Uh, we saw Lindelof playing alongside Ferran yesterday. Obviously... He came in for Harry Maguire because obviously Harry Maguire is injured. Maguire could be out for a few weeks, Solskjaer confirmed. And I thought Lindelof looked off the pace, you know, caught out of... Caught out a few times. Lindelof's not good enough to represent the club and I want us to offload him next year. Um, at Tominay, don't think he was too good yesterday either. Uh, Paul Popper didn't do too bad. I thought at times Popper got into some good positions. Um, he threaded some dangerous passes through. You know, Popper has enjoyed a good start to the Premier League season, you know, Pogba's got seven assists so far this season. Pogba produced good performances for Man United in the last couple of months of last season, but at one point last season he was out with a thigh injury for a while and Pogba sustained some ankle injuries at Man United before. Uh, like I updated you yesterday, it said Man United must sell Paul Pogba in January to buy players. A um, few weeks ago, Paul Popper's agent, Mino Riol, suggested that Paul Popper could return to Juventus for Man United on a free next summer. Because Mino Riol did mention that cheering is still in Paul Popper's heart, but he said the other week that Juventus have no plans to re-sign Popper next summer. But Pogba did enjoy four good years with Juventus before he rejoined Man United. Pogba's current contract at Man United expires next summer. 
Obviously, before the start of this season, Pogba rejected a new Man United contract. And it said earlier on this season that Pogba is very likely to leave Man United on a free next summer. Um, a few weeks ago, Paul Pogba's brother, Matthias Pogba, came out and said that Paul Pogba is yet to decide on his future. And he said his contract situation is up in the air. Uh, Jaden Sancho, obviously he played yesterday against Villarreal. Again, struggled to make an impact. Sancho has not enjoyed a good start to his Man United career. But like I've said to you, it does take some players time to settle in. And I said Sancho will do well at Man United, providing that Solskjaer uses him correctly. Don't forget Borussia Dortmund warned Man United about the Jadon Sancho problem. Uh, Borussia Dortmund CEO mentioned that Sancho's lack of game time at Man United is hurting my soul. Solskjaer has played Sancho on the left now a few times. Um, he's much better on the right than he is on the left because Sancho predominantly plays on the right. Uh, Sancho can also play through the middle. You know, we got Sancho in a deal worth £78 million with add-ons included, and Sancho's under contract with Man United until June 2026. There's an option of a further year. Um, I've got to say, Fred... And Lingard both made impacts when they came on. Uh, Fred obviously came on as a left back because he came on to replace Alex Tellez. And Jesse Lingard obviously got the assist for Ronaldo's winning goal, like I mentioned um, earlier on in the video. Uh, Lingard could be leaving Man United in January. Uh, Lingard obviously played against West Ham in the Cup last week, put a pretty good performance out, um, had some good chances. Should have definitely won Man United a penalty because he got brought down by Mark Noble, but he was greedy on the ball in that game. And obviously Lingard came off the bench and scored the winning goal against West Ham in the league the other week. Prior to that game, though, Solskjaer says that Lingard will be a Man United player next season because he said he's read through and through. Lingard's current contract at Man United expires next year. A few weeks ago now, Lingard rejected a new Man United contract offer over playing time concerns despite him being in the last year of his deal. Earlier on this season, Solskjaer did confirm that Lingard remains part of his plans despite that ongoing speculation. Lingard has been part of the club for a long time. So yeah, so it's good to see Manchester United get revenge on Villarreal from last season's Europa League final. Because obviously Villarreal beat us in the Europa League final last season, 11-10 on penalties. Obviously De Gea missed our penalty and that cost us the game. But it's good to see Manchester United get back to winning ways. Because obviously prior to this game, we'd lost three of our last four games in all competitions. From a Villarreal perspective, they'll be disappointed that they didn't get anything from the game. Because like I mentioned earlier, they did look well organised and put a good performance out. 
you know, Villarreal were missing Gerard Marit Renault. Um, he's one of their key players. He's obviously out with injury. Uh, Chukwu Ezi uh, was also a miss for them because he's out with injury. And obviously Francis Coquelin was suspended, so he played no part. Uh, Juan Foyf played. I didn't think he would have done because um, he was recently out with injury. Villarreal got Juan Foyf from Tottenham. Villarreal, though, haven't enjoyed a good start to the season. They're sitting like 10th in La Liga. Obviously, Villarreal's manager is Unai Emery. He's been Villarreal manager for over a year. He's under contract with Villarreal until 2023. Unai Emery has got a decent pedigree behind him. Obviously won the Europa League at Villarreal last season. He won a few Europa Leagues when he managed Sevilla. Also, he's won a few trophies when he managed PSG. Now, Manchester United's next game is Everton in the Premier League this Saturday. Uh, the preview will be coming up for that later on. But despite Manchester United beating Villarreal, I presume that there's still Man United fans that are demanding Ole out. Obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been under pressure. But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job is safe for now. It obviously said that after the 1-0 defeat to West Ham in the Cowboy Cup. And the Man United board retain full support for Solskjaer. Solskjaer got very good backing in the summer transfer window. John Murtaugh backed him. Uh, John Murtaugh is our director of football and we certainly made the right decision getting a director of football in because I did mention that's one of the structural changes we needed at the club. Uh, Darren Fletcher also backed Solskjaer in the summer transfer window and we made the right decision recommending Darren Fletcher back in. You know, Darren Fletcher knows the club through thick and thin. He enjoyed two decades as a player for Man United. And surprisingly, our owners, the Glazers, had backed him, but only because they'd been persuaded to. Because obviously, towards the end of last season, the Glazers were planning to scrap the Champions League for that European Super League. And reflecting on that, there was Man United fans protesting against the Glazers at the Carrington training ground then. After that, they protested against the Glazers outside Old Trafford. But Solskjaer did reveal that the Glazers apologised. The Glazers have been at Manchester United for 16 years. They purchased the club for 500 million back in 2005. And Manchester United enjoyed a very good summer transfer window this year. You know, made four signings, brought Tom Eaton in on a free from Villa, brought Jadon Sancho in from Borussia Dortmund, we signed Rafael Varane from Madrid, and we re-signed Cristiano Ronaldo after 12 years. In this year's summer transfer window, we spent around £141 million. Solskjaer is going to be staying at Manchester United for at least this season. Uh, Solskjaer has to win a trophy at Manchester United within the next... 18 months 
to basically save his job. This is what Gary Neville said anyway. Solskjaer's not yet won a trophy as Man United manager, and we haven't won a trophy since 2017. That's nowhere near good enough to our standards. And Solskjaer mentioned a couple of weeks ago now that we must leave a legacy of silverware. You know, Solskjaer has to prove himself as an elite manager. We know Solskjaer's ambition for this season, that's to win the Premier League. We haven't won the Premier League since 2013. You know, we've won 20 titles and 13 of them are Premier League titles. And we should be winning the league this season because, like I've said, we've got a title-winning squad, so there's no more excuses. You know, Man United's squad is worth around £805 million, so it's like the third most expensive squad in world football. And Solskjaer knows we've got a good squad because earlier on this season, Solskjaer told his Man United squad that it's better than the 1999 treble winning team that Solskjaer was part of. But if Solskjaer is to eventually get sacked, who will come in to replace him? Now, obviously, there's United fans that are demanding Antonio Conte in to replace him. Uh, I think there's some Man United fans that want Zidane in. You know, like I said before, I think we need someone in with a proven pedigree and someone who's going to suit the strappings of the club. And Ole has no proven pedigree. Obviously, before he was with us, he was at Mould. He enjoyed two spells at Mulder, but they're not a big club. He won a few Norwegian titles with them. And before then, he was at Cardiff, and Solskjaer's record at Cardiff was terrible. The reason he got sacked from Cardiff is because he got them relegated. My other concern about Solskjaer is his decision-making. Analysing the vast majority of the games he's managed at Man United, he's been tactically naive but you know this season is Solskjaer's third full season as Man United manager and I mentioned at the start of this season that this season was going going to be massive for him because he's got big expectations to exceed. Ollie has managed over 150 games as Man United manager in all competitions. In the summer Solskjaer signed a new contract with the club until 2024 there's an option of a fair VM. We made a mistake giving him that new contract. We should have waited until the midway part of this season or even the end of this season to decide or not whether to give him that contract. You know, Solskjaer's been in charge of Manchester United now for almost three years. And Solskjaer has learnt quite a bit on the job, but there's still plenty of things Solskjaer's got to learn because he's still a young coach. And Solskjaer has gained some managerial experience, reflecting now on his being Manchester United manager. We appointed Solskjaer in, in December 2018 to replace Mourinho. He's been permanent Manchester United manager since March 2019. Uh, Solskjaer has signed 14 players as Man United manager so far. And we've spent like £441 million under the Solskjaer era. You know, Solskjaer's enjoyed, what, five transfer windows as permanent Man United manager. You know, Solskjaer's also got rid of a lot of players since he's come in, which he knew he had to do. Obviously, he's got rid of players permanently. Obviously loaned a few players out in the summer transfer window. Um, I like the way Solskjaer develops the youth and Solskjaer's more or less giving everybody their chances to express themselves, including the young players like he showed he would do when he got appointed in as Man United manager. And you can say that progress has been made under Oli because he's got us to semi-finals. He got us to the Europa League final last season. That was his first major final as Man United manager. And last season he got us to the FA Cup quarter final. And so there you go. And Solskjaer got us a second place finish last season in the league. And he got us a third place finish in his first full season. So what Solskjaer produced in his first full season, his second full season, he's looking to build on that this season. 
Anyway, on my next video, I'll be giving you my player ratings from this game. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.